Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And that's what we're doing here today, singing praises unto the Lord, offering ourselves as a sacrifice unto the Lord. Amen. Come on and just give the Lord one more praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. Happy anniversary 
uh, to Clark's one year anniversary. <laughs> Father, in the name 
name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, just to say thank you and praise you and for your greatness and your goodness and your mercy. We ask you, Lord, that you bless this offering, bless those that are about to give. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you manifest in 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Yes, Lord, now I'm all in class.
First of all, you present your bodies as living sacrifices and God's prescribed holy, holy, which is acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He is focusing in on our service unto the Lord. And then he says in verse number two, something very uh, necessary for the child of God. If, 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 if this doesn't happen, then none of the things that he's going to say consequently after will happen in your life. He says, be not conformed to this world. In other words, there's a way that the saints ought to act and to conduct themselves. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what Paul is after here is a renewed way of thinking, a renewed way of thinking. Because the world, when we come into the church, we have one way of thinking. And, and that way of thinking is not a godly way. It's not a godly way. We don't come into the church with a godly mind. Jesus, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We have to allow our minds to be renewed and transformed. The way you transform your mind is literally delving into the scriptures. The Word of God has been given to us to help us to transform our way of thinking. The Bible says, How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to the Word. The Word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. Jesus said, You are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. But you have to allow the word of God to get into your mind, to get into your mind, to get into your mind. The Bible says that our hearts or our mind is deceitful uh, and desperately wicked. And then it asks the question, who should know it? God knows your mind. God knows your mind. And he sent his word to heal your mind to give you the proper way of thinking. So Paul says that uh, if, if you're going to walk with God, then your mind has to be renewed. Your, your thoughts have to be renewed. Now, the reason why he is speaking to us in such terms is because the, what God requires of us, you can't do it in your own mind. You, you won't be able to perform it in your own mind. Because the wisdom of God is foolish to man. And, 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 and people have a way of conducting themselves that are contrary unto the Lord. The Bible tells us that, that, that at one time you are aliens and, and strangers and foreigners from the commonwealth of Israel. That, that at one time you were without God and without Him in this world. But, but God has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus that we should no longer be gods unto ourselves but, but allow God to be the God of our life. To be God over our lives. And, and the only way to satisfy and to please God, your mind has to be renewed. Your, your, your actions have to be changed. A lot of people struggle with serving God because their mind is not changed. Their, their attitude has not changed. The Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he, he is a new creature. All old things have passed away. Uh, behold, all things have become new. You, you can't handle problems and situations the way you want to handle them and deal with them. If you want to serve God, you've got to handle problems and situations the way God has prescribed. God has a way. God says, I've shown you my way. There's a, a way that I've, I've shown you that it's acceptable unto me. Uh, we have to do things God's way. 
There are somebody who have to do things God's way. And, and looking at, at the scriptures here and, and what we're looking at today, what the scripture says, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And, and, and what Paul is after here is that literal transformation of the mind. And, and, and evil is always around us. You, you can't get away from evil. If you uh, uh, try to get away from evil by coming into church, uh, you're going to find evil in the church. Uh, if you think that you can go to an island and, and, and be by yourself, the, the enemy will find you and bring you all kind of evil and wicked thoughts. Uh, evil is always with you, even when you're sleeping in your bed. All of your evil will find its way into your dreams. Evil will find its way into your dreams. And, and those evil thoughts and those evil things that people do to you, all of you, they're going to cause a reaction. Uh, we can't get away from anger. Anger is an emotion that will always be with you. I know that the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Uh, and I know that the Bible says that anger lies in the bosom of a fool. Uh, my God, but you've got to realize that, that, that anger is an emotion that needs to be controlled. Anger is an emotion that, that can either be meant for your good or it can be meant for your destruction. It's about how you look at it and how you deal with it. My God, you've got to have a transformed mind. You've got to realize that people are going to push your buttons, but, but how you respond to that button pushing uh, is up to you and up to your God. My God, you've got to realize that, that a lot of things that you encounter is going to make you mad, make you upset, and then make you, my God, feel like you're going to lose a victory. But you've got to realize that God has a prescribed way uh, for you to deal with your condition, deal with your anger. The Bible says, my God talks and tells us to be slow to speak and swift to hear and, and slow to wrath. We, we've got to manage, my God, our feelings and our emotions. We, we've got to manage our anger. We've got to not allow anger to turn into wrath. And, and wrath becomes that unbridled anger poured out on situations and conditions. My God, who am I talking to you today? Hallelujah, Lord, Lord, help me. Help me to control my emotions. Help me, oh my God, to control my feelings. Help me, Lord, to control my mind. Sometimes our mind wants to take control over us, but, but God says, I want you to control your mind through the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on and clap your hands and, and give God the praise. Give, give God the praise. And, and how you to look at persecution. How you will look at situations that come your way when people push the buttons. You've got to have a renewed mind because our initial response to people is to retaliate. Our initial response to, uh, to people who are pushing our buttons uh, is to retaliate and to get even. But, but how do you know that's not God's way? That's not God's way. That's not what God has for you. My God, if we were to jump down to verse 14, Paul, he begins to tell us. He says, bless, bless them which persecute you and bless them and curse not. You see, you've got to have a renewed mind to, to respond to retaliation and to respond to situations that you don't like. To be able to bless those that, that are literally persecuting you. My God, my God, somebody, uh, somebody need to pray for me on today. Hallelujah, you need to have a renewed mind. My God, when people are talking about you and doing evil things to you, not, 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 not unintentionally, but intentionally trying to get to you, uh, trying to get to you and your children. So the Bible says that in order uh, to contain the victory, uh, you've got to bless him. You, you've got to bless him. He said, bless those uh, that persecute you. My God, that's a whole nother way of looking at this. I, I gotta bless those that, that persecute me, that, that are treating me 
bad uh, talking about me. I gotta bless those. Uh, I can't curse them. I, I can't cuss them out. I, I, oh my God, y'all gotta help me up from here. Uh, that takes a new way of looking. Uh, that takes a new way of referring uh, uh, to the word of God. Uh, that you gotta bless them. That you, when you see them, you say, God bless you. I want God to swim in you. I want God to help you. Uh, How do you know in this way you have to pray for those that have done you wrong? That have done you dirty. You can't go out and get even with them. You've got to, my God, you've got to pray. You've got to ask God to help them. You've got to ask God to strengthen them. And in the process, you can't harbor any ill feelings against them. That's not the way of God. Uh, he was persecuted, uh, but he didn't say a mumbling word. Uh, you've got to consider him uh, uh, who endured such great contradictions of sins. Uh, when they were persecuting Jesus, uh, he said, Father, uh, forgive them, uh, for they don't know what they're doing. Uh, oh God, my God, uh, how many of you are ready to live for Jesus? Uh, how many of you are ready to live for holiness? Uh, Oh God, when they're coming at you, you've got to bless them. When they're coming at you and trying to tear you down, oh, you've got to speak words of life. You've got to speak words of strength. You've got to want God to deliver them. Oh God, you've got to ask God to help them. And Lord, lead them and save them and deliver them. Jonah had a bad heart. He wanted God to kill him. He wanted God to slay him. That's why Paul said, you've got to have a transformed mind. You can't go around wanting God to slay folk. You can't go around wanting God to kill your enemies. Or to kill those that persecute you. To kill those that hate you. You're not the judge. You're not the 
to me. I can't be helped out. The door, honey, what that scripture is talking about is people that have done you wrong. And you got it in your mind. Oh, I'm not giving them nothing. Even though you have it in your possession, Jesus is saying, let your mind be transformed. It is in your power to give it. Give it to them uh, and not the uh, Be like your God. Uh, the Bible says that God, uh, He's good to the just uh, and to the unjust. Uh, at one time, uh, you were unjust, uh, but God still blessed you. Uh, at one time, uh, you were the enemy of God, uh, but God still blessed you. Uh, so God doesn't do anything. Uh, If God says bless him, you gotta turn around and bless him. He said bless your enemy. Oh, if your enemy is hungry, give him something to drink. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And if he hungers, give him something to eat. Oh God, you got to be transformed. If you're gonna walk with Jesus, oh God. You got to have that show up. Tongue talking Holy Ghost. If you're going to walk the call, you got to get down on your knees and pray. And say, Lord, help me to walk worthy of the word that you have placed me in. Lord, help me to love my enemies. Help me to do good to them that hate me. And despite what Help me to let my light shine before me that they may see my good works and glorify my Father which is in heaven. Oh, clap your hands and give God a praise. Give God a praise. The Bible says, avenge not your sins, but rather give place unto man. Oh, you don't have to run around trying to defend yourself. Let God defend you. Let God be your king master. Let God be your co-signer. Let God be true and every man a liar. You don't have to walk around and tell the people all the good things that you've done. Trying to justify yourself and everybody. Let let God testify all the glory that He has set upon you. God is the recommendation that you can have. God is the one that will shoot you up and put you on a pedestal. God is the one that will bring you out of darkness and let everybody know that that is my child. Oh my God, God in the world, I'll show up and avenge you and that night spirit. So take your mind off of doing evil. Take your mind off of getting revenge and let brotherly love continue. Oh God, love everybody. Oh God, Oh! 
perfect you. But you've been transformed. But you've been renewed. By the transformation of your mind. God says that the weapons of your warfare are not common. But mighty through God. Through the pulling down of strongholds. God says I've given you an anointing. Should be love. Your natural reflex 
that was, I know that was a shame. I know that was a shame. We must promote Jesus at all times. Overcome evil by doing good. Overcome the devil by doing good. Overcome your own natural reflexes by doing what thus saith the Lord. And in order to do that, you got to be transformed. You can't do that on your, on your own. What I'm preaching up here today can't happen on your own. If it could, you would need Jesus. You would need the Holy Ghost. You would need the Father. You need Him to help us to overcome evil. I do it. We must always do good to those that treat us evil. Yes, Lord. That must be our first and only response. Our first and only response. Yes, Why? Because it's written. Vengeance belongs unto God. He will repent. Thus saith the Lord. The world is watching. The world is watching. They're looking to see if we've been transformed. They're looking to see if we've been renewed in our life. And you know a tree by its fruits. What type of fruit are you bearing? Let's bear that good fruit. That good fruit comes with patience. Amen? Comes with patience. Comes with patience. Patience. Got to wait on God. Let God bear in nature. Let God sanctify you. Let God help you. Let God encourage you. Let God fight your power. The power that belongs to you, but the power belongs to the Lord. So we have to be transformed. Come on and clap your hands and give God Hallelujah. Let the church stand. Live in love. Died in the Savior. Buried in the carry. My sins away. Rose and he justified. Did what? Free me from that. One day, what? He's coming back. One glory is dead. Amen? How many wait for his return? Yes. Yes. I don't know about you, maybe I shouldn't say this, but last night I was in my bed, I said, come now, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh! You get like that sometimes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. When I woke up with my eyes, when I woke my eyes, I was like, oh, okay. He's still here. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You ever felt like that? Keep on living. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your heavenly gift the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, for the Word, the Word of God, and the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. Lord, we pray that you help us to manifest your Word here on today. Help us, Lord, to overcome every evil that is coming our way by doing good. Hallelujah. Not looking for revenge. Thank you, Lord. Not looking for doing things the world does. Amen. We're doing it the way of the Lord. Bless us, Lord. Strengthen our hearts and our minds. Strengthen our spirit. Oh, my God. Help us not to walk around with our natural reflexes of worldliness, but let uh, the 
natural reflex be godliness. Transform us. Renew us. Strengthen our mind and our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, to him be glory both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, love on everybody.